Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to the weekend. I hope it's your weekend and not just mine. It's a chilly 13 degrees outside right now. And started messing around with the reverb kit here. Oh, when was it? Last night? Kind of got it out of the box and checked it over and cleaned it up and everything a little bit. So, since I don't have to worry about getting it all together quickly or anything, since this is going to be a backup, even though I know it's going to be a better flyer and look a lot better than the other one, I can kind of take my time. Got everything I need. Motors and ESCs will be here tomorrow, though. So, just going to kind of get this uh, frame assembled a little bit and kind of think about the layout. A couple things I'm not happy with on my reverb is how it looks and also just how some of my components are placed. You know, I got a lot of electrical tape around things and all kinds of this and that around the arms and the ESCs. So I've got some like, you know, nice shrink wrap and stuff. So once I get the second one built and flying just as good as the first, then I'll tear that first one down and pretty it up a little bit too. So that's kind of the, the whole goal of everything is to build a backup reverb because I just love the way that the thing flies. It just flies perfect. I've never owned an alien. I can only assume that these fly just as close. Um, it's just such a tight little solid package and you know just for freestyle it's just super fun talked about all that stuff before what's going on fly till i die what's up flying ryan have you recovered from uh your sebring trip yet brother i hope you had a good time down there i haven't Looked on the on the YouTube's to see if you. I think you did post a, a a vlog or two from down there, if I'm not mistaken. I really haven't caught up on any of the Sebring news. I didn't even know that uh, Thomas won until uh, I was uh, cruising through some stuff like two days ago. How do I like the look of it? Um, you know, it's basically like a. You know, it's, it's like an alien with just a little bit of different designs, pretty much like what Chad and everybody has said. As far as like the products, the actual product itself, you know, the everything is impulse quality for sure, but it's not as nice as something as, um, you know, like a steel alien where everything comes chamfered and everything's really nice. You know, once you hold a ch uh, like a premium chamfered frame in your hands, you know, you just know that you're just touching and feeling like a different product. You know, for example, some of my Proton is chamfered, but not all of it. But, you know, this Tokyo XL frame right here, you know, this... This is just, you know, this just screams quality. You know, the nice chamfers and everything, the way it just feels. I honestly think, you know, we're definitely looking at like the same kind of carbon weave and pattern that's built into the two. The lamination layers on the impulse stuff is great. You know, the problem when you chamfer too much though, as you could maybe see right here is that you see that line right there you know you start to get a little bit of separation and this was just basically from handling it i never crashed this was like a long range uh, uh tokyo xl six inch that i built and you know it was never crashed or anything but i started to get delamination you know right here already um 
actually need to talk to Mike about that and see if there's anything he can do for me on that. Um, cause I've bought, you know, quite a few of his frames, uh, lately. How did you do down there, man? Did you just go down there and hang out or did you actually, uh, did you actually race a little bit? Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with enjoying the experience, brother. I'm glad that you're out there and able to do that kind of stuff. I wish I could maybe one of these days. I get to like FPV Fest because it's like an hour away from me. I'd like to go to IO this year if they have it. I should have went to Mega Drone because my one buddy from my flying club qualified with one of the golden tickets at Ready Made RC FPV Fest. And he went down and actually flew and did pretty good for his third professional rate well third race so i'll keep an eye on the chat and catch up with you guys and we'll just start uh messing around here with the reverb a little bit maybe you guys have seen the reverb vi uh, build videos uh maybe you haven't um i tried to keep i tried to put a lot in there but I also wanted to try to keep them short and to the point. But I just wanted to do some live stream builds because it's just a lot funner just sitting here with other people. So I'll take a look real quick at the reverb manual. And pretty much the first thing you start with, the reverb's divided into two plates. It's not like one long plate anymore like the Alien was. So you have, you know, an upper and a lower. And they're kind of offset and staggered as you can see in this picture right here. So the front where the camera and stuff goes actually sits a little bit lower. I'd show you on my actual first reverb here, but it's kind of hard to see. So the first thing, basically what I've been doing is I'm glad a lot of these frames and uh, people are going to this because it's so much better than using lock nuts and everything. So they're using the actual like press nuts. So you're just taking a screw and running it up through the bottom and you're just locking these press nuts into, uh, into place here and then what's going to happen is the arm is going to go on here and sandwich between that and you're going to thread the bolts through these cool little cone washers and then those are going to come up uh, right through there and that is basically what you get when you look at this picture right here so that's basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the longer ones go in the middle, the shorter ones go on the outside, a cone nut goes between them, and then eventually we'll have four arms and a frame together. Batteries are sharp beeping, hoping to get some flight. Hoping to get some flights in tomorrow because it's going to start to become a super snowy mess around here. And that is not going to be fun. So we'll just start out putting this frame together and just taking one of the cone washers here and sticking that over. This is all um, gunmetal finished M3 hardware on here and just put the first screw one right up through there and then the arm goes right into there and it's always a mess doing these first couple till you get a couple of them in and i just kind of get everything together nice and 
loosey goosey. Now we're going to grab a shorter one that's going to go into the outside. So this all goes pretty fast. So how did everybody's uh, Friday go? Any any good any good news out there? I gotta remember to keep all this in camera too. another arm that one's gonna need to be flipped it's always nice to build a second frame that you really like it's kind of like another another chance at uh, I don't know it's just kind of like another another chance to do something better. Oh yeah, working on the house. Fun, fun. I guess it comes down to how much of that house you're actually doing versus how much someone else is doing. I know I about gave myself carpal tunnel putting in our, our flooring and stuff whenever we moved in here. That was a great time. But I never did anything like that before in my life. So it was really satisfying something about like your own house man that like you know when you put your own blood and sweat and tears into it it just seems a lot i don't know it just seems a lot different like there's a lot a different kind of a connection to it because i look and it's like i painted all those walls i filled those holes i did that drywall i mean granted we had people do a lot of stuff windows and roof and all kinds of stuff like that but you know when I look at that flooring it makes me proud that we did that except for that last four strips that I had to do that took me like a lot of recuts and A lot of problems trying to get those last four strips in to get those locked in I didn't want to have to take off like door jams and all kinds of stuff so that was a rough one so once you get all of these in you immediately just start to feel how locked in this thing gets and I didn't use Loctite on my first one I'm not going to use it on this one the machining of all of these bolts and all this is so true that it's just not even necessary. It's not going to come loose. Maybe after a couple crashes or something like that. But, you know, my other one is super solid. So, there we go. There is that part of the frame all done. And you see we got some little nubs sticking out there now to 
kind of figure out what we're going to do as far as component layout. And this is the this is where I'm kind of looking at things and kind of struggling as far as like what I want to do. If I look at my first reverb, what I did was I actually used different and longer bolts because they do give you they do give you these little uh, vibrationing standoffs to put on there and they're great and everything but the problem is is I do kind of like to have there's just not enough material there and it's kind of loose and I know there's going to be ESC wires and stuff like that and you know you can friction fit pretty much all of these boards and everything now but I just like a little bit more meat for that to grab onto and to put a little bit a little nut on top of there and it really didn't cause me any problems in my last build so everything is tuned and running great so I'm gonna break out into the old RC screw kit screw loose kit here which is getting uh, seems like it's getting smaller every time that I come in here Give me uh, one second to take this call, guys, and I'm going to dig these screws out.
All right, sorry guys. Back here again. Had to mute everything there, had a phone call. Probably lost a couple people. But people tend to come and go with these things. So now comes the what to do what to do part. So currently on my reverb I have my Unify Pro mounted underneath the flight controller which frees up room for the crossfire and I'm going to do the immortal I've decided I'm going to do the immortal T mount just because I really want to make it just work that way and I don't want anything tied to the top plate so I've got my Unify Pro here kind of um, soldered and moved around so I can basically come like this with one of the 3D printed mounts and it'll go in there and then that way I can have the antenna coming off of that so I definitely want the Unify like right there I'm just trying to figure out if it's better to flip it around and have or if it would reach yeah it's gonna it's gonna reach like that so I don't have to worry about super long wires let's see the flight controller looks flight controller looks a little bit shorter on this one and I think I kind of want it a little bit higher. I'd settled on these shorter, these shorter uh, nuts, which were three by twenty. But I think I'm going to move back to the three by twenty-five. maybe keep that unify on there and just kind of stretch the cable back out to there take this tape off here and see what we got going on oh that's fine RL there's a lag and all this other stuff and all everything. It's the beauty of the live streams, my man. Oh, stabbed myself there. Now I'm bleeding all over my Unify. Definitely will have blood, sweat, and tears in this build. Oh my goodness. This tape is on there. All right, we kill all the blood off of it here. So, I kind of have it at like that right now. If I end up going right here, like I did before, 
then I'll be able to go ahead and stick everything right like that and there'll be enough room for the crossfire and I kind of like it that way too because it does protect the VTX so I think that's what I'm gonna do is stick with what I did last time and keep the stack height what it was because flies good oh no it's just a little poke it's done bleeding now I don't want to mess that up I wonder if I went with 30 millimeters. Seems pretty long, but I might have. It's way too long. All right, so it's 25. Definitely. So we'll grab. Four of those. That's going to be good. The Unify, like I said, the Unify is underneath my current flight controller and works great like that. The only problem is, is the way that I routed the wire, I don't like because it's kind of coming up and over instead of straight back because I needed to bring it up. Because I have the antenna zip tied to the top plate. Pretty much like you see on every uh, alien build and stuff like that. Except the Unify isn't on the top plate. But since I got this, the 3D uh, printed uh, standoff mount. And I'm going to use the Immortal T that will free things up a little bit. And I think just for like a medium range, long range deal with Crossfire, if I really wanted to push this, that, you know, if I wanted to throw a huge battery on top of here, that's just gonna make everything better because then I'm gonna have more antenna out as far as um, VTX. And that's just gonna improve the quality and the gain of the antenna as it's coming away as it's going away from me or coming back to me or or whatever versus what I have now I saw on somebody's video I think it was one of trappies or something on team black sheep that I actually have one of the VAS ions coming out that are extended which is awesome i love the ion antenna it's what i use on my goggles i think it's one of the best antennas that you can get for 5.8 right now only problem is is it's super short you can add an extend it and an extension on it but you lose a little bit of gain unless you're 
Alex Grieve and you're building it and you know how to recover that gain. So let's see, what did I do then? Then it looks like I put spilling out the parts here. So then it looks like I actually went with a nut on these to create a spacer. It's funny how you start off with a plan to make things a little bit different, yet here I am doing some of the same. But, like I've been preaching in my videos, stay with what works, standardize, standardize and fly. Enough of this messing around. Only bad part about doing this is that if you have to service your VTX, and that pretty much means that you have to undo the entire flight controller. So that's going to go like that. That's going to go like that. There's plenty of room underneath there. I'm going to add these soft mounts to give us a little bit more space and clearance. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to fit perfect if you can see that and then this can come out just a little bit and it'll be just long enough for me to put into that standoff mount that's coming now the big question is the other thing is do I still want to run my power cables out of the back or do I want to try to go to the side and I haven't had any problems running them out of the back and it really isn't going to save much weight to go from there versus wrapping it around to let's see one of the standoffs is like right there so I don't know. Get these uh, prepped and just kind of take a look at it here and see what we think. Soldering iron. Solder. Turn this up a little bit because I want to make sure it gets through 
all of this heavy gauge wire. bottom pads here on the Bardwell F4 flight controller this is a batch 2 because it does have the 9 volt for the VTX and everything versus the 7.6 and I'm gonna tin these this ground and 5 volt down here seems like maybe this is a newer batch too because got a lot of splatter going on there like there's some more conformal coating on there than last time. All right. Let's just get these on here and go from there. Get off. All right, positive. Okay, that's a nice joint. I always start off by kind of getting this solder on the board a little bit hot first, but you can see it, it melts instantly even at like 650. So then I get that and just make a little bit of contact and then just kind of heat the wire and slowly push it into place and then just kind of drag it up towards the top and boom, solid. There we go. So now, if I put this puppy here, this is going to be going into the 3D part. So I'm going to be coming up to like right here. Which wire do I have coming up on mine right there? Not much just barely to where it clears the plate so I'm thinking we can get away with maybe right there yeah that'll work Thanks, man. Lots of soldering. Here, college, at work sometimes. Don't really solder a lot at work. Pretty much all the repairs we do are just like swapping boards or sending stuff back to the manufacturer or changing cables. There's very few things that 
can't really think of anything that we go board level on anymore in the medical technology world. Have to spend money on all those expensive parts. You can see that I'm not trying, but the more you start to build, the dirtier your bench gets every time. So just keep all that nice and shiny. Do a quick rotation here. Make sure we get all the sides. This will all kind of melt together whenever we put it on the XT60. And I can hit this one down here. hate building XT60s, no reason why other than laziness. it even more when they look horrible. Just gonna put a little bit of solder in here. And grab the negative, put the shrink all the way down. Lay it in there and apply the heat and just let the magic happen. Hold it there for a few minutes, or a few seconds that is. Now that's on there nice and straight. But we are going to come back and add some more solder to it, but it needs to cool first. Or as soon as we add the solder, it's just going to come loose. So same thing here. Don't need much, just a tad. You can see just a tad down in there. Then we're going to lay the wire right there, apply the heat, and let the magic happen, boom, popped right back into place. 
me get this solder lined up a little bit better. This does seem to flow out a little bit. Yeah, burnt the end of my XT60 a little bit. That's all right. So that's all there. So now everything's still kind of hot, but I'm just going to come back in and basically I'm just going to just tack a little bit of solder in a couple spots. Don't want to do it a lot because you don't want to make everything start shifting around. But where there's like a gap, I always want to kind of try to fill that and bridge that just a touch. just to make it a little bit more solid. So that is it. Those aren't going anywhere. Slide this heat shrink tubing down there. Slide this one down. Push on them against them there we go one XT60 looks like my positives just slightly longer but that's okay so then that leaves us with that right there and standoffs are going to be there the plate's going to be about right here so batteries can lay here and just kind of plug in I like plugging them in back there instead of here that way you don't have to worry about things getting all broken and everything like that Now, how far do I want to mess around with this tonight? Let me tin up this board a little bit and think a little bit here as far as what to do. So the Bardwell flight controller, this will be the third ship with it. I like it because I like everything right here on the corners and it's got nice and big nice big pads and so far I haven't had a failure which is always nice let's see camera control I don't need that might power it off of this not sure is to be determined let's see when things are like laid out and just kind of thought out you can just see how much faster and easier things go and I'm just putting a little bit of solder on here for right now because tomorrow when I hook up the ESCs, definitely be coming in and adding a little freshy. So that always makes life a lot easier. But get a little action going on there now. And 
video we're going to need video maybe the power and ground and definitely TX4 so that's going to be for the crossfire and then we're going to need LED for smart audio because we will be reassigning that and we need RX4 so that's it that thing is all tinned up and ready to go there is the 5 volt and ground but I went underneath the last time maybe I'll go yeah, I don't want the wires on top see it's the thing I don't want like the velcro strap like ripping at everything that's the big thing about these reverbs I don't like so the gentleman before me had extended the wires already on this crossfire micro goes like that so if we go right there and uh, stupid BST connector Well, let's just say I have it sitting there and then the immortal T is going to come right around here and I want to try to keep this wire as straight as possible and as close to the body as possible landing pads here so we're not gonna have to worry about that
Sorry about the no audio there for guys. On call for work, so phone always rings. So I'm just kind of measuring out crossfire here and where I'm going to put the wires. So I've got my ground and five volt underneath the flight controller here. Got those tacked in. And then we're going to sneak the other two right up through there. And always forget. Which one is TX and which one is RX? I'm going to just take another educated guess like I do every time. And if it doesn't work, then I will redo it. So I'm going to put channel 1 to TX. channel 2 to the RX pin so now our crossfire is wired up and wires are a little long which is okay because we can just kind of push them back in there out of the way and then this is going to rotate down like that and come back up like that all right So this new batch of the JB can handle the power of the Unify, but on this one, I have it wired up through the flight controller. The video looks pretty good. So I am going to just stick with that so that means I'm going to remove the power and a ground I'm 
And these grounds are tied together. Twist this around here and get it back into its slot. Keeps wanting to twist on me. Get in there. Close those back up. Make sure that ground is good and solid. Put that to the side. And so we're not going to need much wire since this is going to be underneath. So it's just going to kind of come up through here, like so. And I'll make it a little long because we can always twist. Smart Audio is the longest one. So I'm going to clip it like right there. And then I will clip these about right there This is all silicone wire, so it strips really good with fingernails or your teeth. I mutilate my fingernails, so I am going to be using my teeth. And we are just going to tin these wires up. Plug the VTX. And we'll go ahead and tack down smart audio to the LED port because we are going to resource reassign that. That is right in the JB Flight Controller Manual, how to do that, which is very nice.
and then we are going to tack down our video and then our 5 volt and then I need to move this crossfire wire out of the way so I can hit the ground done so there is our unify harness So we'll give that a twist and t turn. And same thing with the crossfire to kind of clean this up a little bit. plug that in and then I guess well for giggles you can just fire it up let's see how everything is so we've got Unify all powered up and everything. Crossfire all powered up. Grab a battery and pray for no smoke. So we've got power on the flight controller we have power on the crossfire and we have power on the unify That Unify really smells hot though. It smells like it's cooking. Well, that all looks good. Something's going on there, though, because that does smell a little hot. I'm not 100% what sure what is going on. I think it actually melted the heat shrink around there, unless that's my blood. This was a questionable one. I have another one, actually, over here that I can use. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the live stream tonight and take a look at this and pick this up uh, again sometime this weekend so thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you guys later on